Good afternoon, dear teachers and students. My name is Olga Anatolievna. My surname is Pagarelova. I'm a teacher of English from Nazarbayev Intellectual School in Ustkimnagorsk. Today our lesson is devoted to the topic The Open Window, and we, we, we shall begin. So first of all, dear students, I'd like you to guess, uh, here are four pictures that illustrate the meaning of the open window. So discuss in your groups and guess of what those meanings are. Okay, have you discussed? So let's check. Uh, so for the first picture, what have you decided? What could the meaning be? Okay. So the impact of the fresh air on health. Okay. What about the second one, this picture? Okay, it looks like a, a picture, the illustration for a story. What about this picture? Can you guess? So you think that that's a bit about big cities. Okay, and what about the last one? Okay, so you think that this one is related to cultures. Okay, let's check uh, if your predictions were right. So the first one is healthy habit, and you are correct with that. The second one is cultural diversity, so talking about different cultures, you are right. Um, the next one is the album, which was recorded by Rich, and here your guess was quite different from that. And the last one is a story by H. Munro, and here you are right as well. Okay, so let's look at the lesson objectives for today. Today you are going to identify the possible meanings and using of collocation the open window and you have actually already done that. Uh, so the next step you are going to write a running dictation. After that you will read the text about the impact of the room ventilation in human health and that will be your formative assessment. After that you will read the beginning of the story and predict what will happen next. Then you will watch a video and answer the questions, and that will be your formative assessment. And uh, finally, you are going to create a role play, uh, changing the context of it. So, changing the context of the story, you will read and watch before that. Let's move on. So, the open window writing dictation. You can see. Uh, pieces of paper around the classroom, what I want you to do is divide into pairs. One person will be a runner, the second one will be a writer. So the task of the runner is to get to the piece of paper, read the text, go back to the writer and dictate it. The writer should uh, write the text. After that you, shall, you should swap. Okay, those of you who have already finished need to um, get back to your seats. And for a second, I wanted to close what you have written. And can you remember which open window was the text about? Okay, you are right. This one was about the album recorded by Rich. So now. I want you to swap your papers with another peers and check each other's works. You can see the text on the slide. Have you checked? Okay, how many mistakes have you got? 
Okay. Did you count the punctuation marks? Good. So now let's move on. Um, you are going to read the text about a healthy habit related to the opening of windows or having the windows open while you are sleeping. This will be your formative assessment. Here you can see the reading criteria. Okay, so please you have 15 minutes for this task. Okay, have you finished? Hand in your works, please. So now let's move on. The next task you will have is the reading. You uh, Look at the picture, please, and predict what the story you are going to read will be about. Okay, so you think that the story will be about the woman who liked to look through the window. Okay. Any other variants? Okay. Okay. So now you're going to read the text. You have the sheets of paper with the text on your desks. And you will have to answer the questions after reading it. Okay, so now let, uh, let's answer the following questions. So the first question, um, could you please discuss first in your groups and then we'll check your answers together. Okay, let's check your answers. Why has Mr. Nuttall come to the countryside? Who would like to answer? Okay, yes, please. So he came here to cure his nerves. Good. What about the second question? Why has he come to visit to the house? Okay, please. Mm -hmm. He knew some people. So you think that was the purpose of his visit. Good. Um, is he enthusiastic about the visit and why or why not? Okay. No. Yes, you are right. So he regretted about having to be there. Uh, the next question. What is it about Mr. Sappleton's niece that causes front an additional distress. So you think that what, what she says and how she behaves made him feel stressed. Okay. Uh, what about the question number six? Describe in your own words what happens from the time Franton comes to the Sepulton household with particular attention to why things happen as they do. Okay, good. What do we learn or what do we know about the girl from this part of the story? Okay, you are right. Uh, how does the room look like? Good, so the window was open despite uh, the month or the time of the year, good, the season. Uh, and the last question you have for this part is what is the climax or high point of the story 
and at what point do we understand that the niece is what the niece is really like sorry okay so you think that she seems to be a completely different person from what she says any other opinions Okay, good. So, um, let's discuss together which of these techniques does the writer use to hold the reader's attention. Okay, so he uses the first one. Do you think he has the second one? Okay, good. What about striking opening? Was it so striking? No, you are right. Uh, dis describing people in an interesting way. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. And an effective ending. Okay, you are right. So we haven't finished reading the story, but we'll come back to that later. What about combining general statements with specific examples? No, that was not present here. Good. Using language of emphasis. You are right. He has very strong emotional words which have been used to describe uh, the situation, what was going there. Good. And the last one, dropping hints about what will happen next. Okay, so you think that there were some slight uh, hints that could be uh, used as a reminder about what will happen next, but mostly he, uh, the author says nothing about the last, the next scene. Good. And the last one, humor. Does he use any humor in the story? No, no, not really. You are right. So now. You are going to watch a movie and you'll have to be ready to answer some questions. This will be a formative assessment, therefore you need to be very attentive while watching it. Be down presently, Mr. Nuttall. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. It is very kind of you to wait with me. Your aunt, Mrs. Sappleton. I'm I'm looking forward to meeting her, I'm sure. Do you know many of the people around here? Hardly a soul, I'm afraid. My sister stayed at the rectory four years ago, and uh, she's given me some letters of introduction. Oh. Oh? Then you know practically nothing about my aunt? I know her name and address. Her great tragedy happened just three years ago. That would be after your sister's time. Her tragedy? You may 
wonder why we keep these French doors open on such a cold afternoon. It is quite warm for the time of year. Out through those doors, three years ago to a day, my aunt's husband and her two sons went off for their day shooting. They never came back. Crossing the moor to their favourite snipe shooting ground, all three were engulfed in a treacherous piece of bog. Their bodies were never recovered. That was the awful part of it. No grave, no marker. Poor aunt thinks that they will come back someday. They and the little brown Labrador that was lost with them, and walk in as they used to. She spends hours sitting, waiting, watching through the open doors. She won't allow them to be shut until it's dark outside. Oh, I'm sorry. Do sit down, Mr. Nuttall. shortly before they... Poor dear aunt. She's often told me of how they went out. Her husband with his waterproof coat over his arm and Ronnie, her eldest son, teasing her. The tea'd better be ready when we return, Mama, or there'll be hell to pay. Do you know... Sometimes, on still, quiet evenings like this, I almost get a feeling that they will all just walk in through those doors. I'm terribly sorry for keeping you waiting, Miss Nuttall. I hope Vera has been amusing you. She has been very interesting. Oh, I hope you don't mind the French doors. My husband and my sons will be home directly from shooting, and they always come in this way. Well, they've been out for snipe in the marshes today, so they'll make a fine mess of my carpet. Typical of you men folk, isn't it? They're calling it nervous exhaustion. It's in the family. As you know, my uh, sister... Is the tea ready? Make sure it is. I seem to remember your sister. Yes. Sweet lady. Yes, your sort don't come down so much anymore. I hope your stay will be peaceful. Are you a shooting man, Mr. Nuttall? Uh, milk? Uh, just a little. It hasn't been the same in these last few years. The rain and the mud, you see. It's made an infernal quagmire at the marshes. The doctors agree in ordering me complete rest. An absence of mental excitement and anything in the nature of violent physical exercise. On the subject of diet, though, they are not in such agreement. No. Oh, here they are at last. 
And don't they look as if they're muddy up to the eyes? But most of it's dry. They'll need to get used to it if we go to war. Oh, please, let's not talk about that. We'll be home by Christmas, you'll see. Check. Who's that who bolted out as we came up? The most extraordinary man. A Mr. Nuttle. He, he talked about nothing but his illnesses. And then he dashed off without a word of goodbye or apology when you came in. I expect it was the Labrador. He told me he had a horror of dogs. He was once hunted into a cemetery on the banks of the Ganges by a pack of pariah dogs and had to spend the night in a newly dug grave with the creatures snarling and grinning and foaming just above him. Enough to make anyone lose their nerve, I dare say. Okay, so now on your desks you have your listening formative assessment and you have a number of questions on which you will have to give an answer. Okay, have you finished? Place hand in your works. So now let's move on. But before you start working on the next task and on the last open wi window, which is related to the cultural diversity, I'd like to ask you, where do you think the story was filmed? And why, of course. Okay, so you think that it could be filmed in France because of the outfit of the people. Good. Any other variants? Mm -hmm. So another chance is uh, that the story was filmed in England because of uh, tea time. Good. Any other variants? Good. So now you are going to work in groups. You will have to imagine that the story would, uh, happened in another country. So you will have to change the plot uh, if you think that could be different You'll, and create your own story. And of course, after uh, some time, you will have to act it out. I will give you five minutes and the first group will imagine that this story happened in Kazakhstan. The second group will have to work and uh, create the story happening in Russia. 
And the third group will have to imagine that the story was filmed in India. So now you have five minutes to create your story and to change the plot of it. Okay, wind up. Okay, so now uh, your time is up. Let's check what you have created. Who would like to act your story first? Okay, so the group w uh, which had to film the story in Russia. Okay, so please welcome. Okay, so thank you. I have a question to the first and the third group. Do you think that if the story happened in Russia, it could be um, like what you, you have just seen? Mm -hmm. Okay, you agree? Why? Okay, so there were a lot of cultural details in what you have seen and in what uh, the second group has created. Good. Who would like to be the next one? Kazakhstan. So you have finished your story. Good. So please. Okay, so now I have the same question, thank you. I have the same question to groups number two and three. Do you think that if the story happened in Kazakhstan, it would have been like what you have seen? Mm -hmm. You are right, so they have even created some elements of their clothes, good. And now let's welcome the third, the last but not the least group. And we are going to move to India and watch the story in the Indian context. Okay, thank you. So now groups one and two, please give the feedback to this group. Do you think that could happen like this? Yes. So in talking about the cultural elements, what was presented? There were a lot of dances and they even tried to create their songs. Good. So...
let's look through our lesson objectives for today and check if we have completed all of them. So you have identified the possible meanings and uses of the collocation the open window and there were four, four of them which we have moved through during our lesson. And then you wrote a running dictation. After that, you read the text about the impact of the room ventilation on human health. That was your formative assessment. I will mark it uh, later till the next lesson. And then you read the beginning of the story and predicted what will happen after that. After that, you watched the video and answered the questions. And that was your least informative assessment. Finally, you created a role play changing the context of the story you read and seen, had, have seen before that. Okay, so we have accomplished all of our learning objectives and lesson objectives for today. And thank you for your attention. Uh, your home task for the next lesson. On your desks you have the handouts with this story. You will have to read the story again and uh, you will have to write down the words and learn them by heart. So for some of you there will be less words, for some of you more words and they might be quite different but you'll have to do that so that you could understand the story next time without using a dictionary. That is the end of our today's lesson. Thank you for your attention. And dear colleagues, you can find this lesson on the Moodle platform. That's all for today. Thank you.